On the one hand, the site, with its massive tar sands located high above the landscape, offers the prospect of money, possibilities, and growth. However, the reality is that such prospects carry extreme consequences for the environment and those that depend on it. An ESG analyst from Nordea has traveled to the state of Alberta, Canada, where one of the world's biggest oil reserves lies hidden beneath the sand. Covering an area the size of England, the so-called oil sand holds enough oil for the next 200 years. But extracting the black gold has enormous consequences. As investors, we can push for change and use our investments and the access they provide to question practices. Tar sand is a hot political issue. As a global investor, Nordea is under constant public pressure to take a stand on issues related to such industries as oil extraction. This is why the ESG analyst has traveled here to meet environmental organizations, civil rights movements, and authorities. Um, there's about 500 people in my community, but there's also all The first meeting is with Melina Massimo, a member of the Cree people, one of the First Nations tribes living in the area. I was born into a small community that just around the time I was born, they started seeing, you know, oil and gas wells pop up all over. The process of extracting oil from the sand involves digging open mines or injecting water into the subsurface at high pressure to dissolve the oil. Regardless of the method used, chemicals are needed to extract the oil from the sand. The first thing Melina wants to show is one of the many tailing ponds in the area. And then across this highway is another tailing pond. And then across the highway is another tailing pond. A tailing pond is an engineered dam or dike system used to capture oil sand tailings. Oil sand tailings are a mixture of salts, suspended solids, and other soluble chemical compounds, such as acids, benzene, hydrocarbons, residual bitumen, fine silts, and water. The chemical concentrations are harmful to fish and are polluting the groundwater, while oil on the pond surfaces is harmful to birds. The chemicals are stored for up to 100 years. It's a whole toxic sludge, and then they'll cover it eventually. What their plan is to cover it with um, coarse, yeah, like, yeah. you know, the dirt, and then cover it again with sand, and then call it end cap lakes, and they'll make end yeah. cap lakes, and then put the fish in. And I don't know who would really want to fish if there's toxic contamination lying underneath. The ESG analyst wants to know if the communities have been consulted on environmental issues from what I've seen in the majority of the communities, is basically a company going into a community, giving a presentation and saying that they've consulted with the community. So that's what we're seeing that's happening and that's, that's what a lot of communities are raising is like, well, we don't feel like we're being fully consulted and properly consulted. Melina and the analyst continue their journey up north along the Athabasca River to one of the original Cree settlements. Cecilia's house. Um, she is a community member. She is home right now. Cecilia no longer drinks tap water or uses it for cooking. And she stays clear of the shower because she has been told it too might be hazardous. Only lately we've, uh, we, we were informed that it was no good for us. The health risk is particularly causing the generation currently raising children to start moving away. Cecilia is also considering leaving her childhood home. This is our land, this is our home, this is, you know, my mom, if my mom was alive today, you know, she'd, she'd be up in arms about the water. Mm -hmm. 
Outside her window is the Athabasca River, where locals have fetched their drinking water for thousands of years. And right on her doorstep are the water containers delivered weekly to Cecilia and the other inhabitants of Fort McKay. The tar sand oil extraction is expected to create 600,000 jobs in Alberta before 2020. The oil is in itself a driver of the Canadian economy and will push growth for many years to come. On the phone, it is Zane from One Direction. Hi, Zane. It's uh, Mark and Danny from Edmonton. Hello, Mark. Hello, Danny. Zane from One Direction. Having formed an overall view of the consequences of the oil extraction, the ESG analyst traveled to Edmonton for a meeting with the Deputy Secretary of Environment and other high-ranking local government representatives. They are responsible for implementing the correct procedures. The first question the analyst asks is about the drinking water problem. Yeah, I think this particular issue in Fort Mackay, there was, because um, we had we had worked, and we still continue to work with the community up there, because there, it was identified that there was uh, uh, different types of chemicals in the drinking water. Afterwards, the deputy secretary explains that the tailing ponds Melina showed the analyst pose a key problem. After getting responses to the questions, the ESG analyst outlines a series of criteria that must be met for oil extraction to remain an investment project of interest to Nordea. At Nordea, we do not believe in just standing by and watching but neither should we back out and refrain from investing. Investing gives us the power to influence companies, ask vital questions, follow up and demand transparency.